Hi, this is Randy Finney, and today is Wednesday, January 28th, 2015. In this video, I wanted to cover the uh, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, talk on the uh, minor stocks real quickly. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and jump in and start out with the uh, spot chart of gold. This is a daily chart. Uh, these spot charts are end of day prices, meaning that this does not reflect today's uh, trade uh, price uh, in gold. We're down a little, trading down on the GLD, and and spot gold is trading down. Although this is a end of day chart, uh, but with that being said, let's it's close enough. So let's go ahead and take a look. You know, I've, I've uh, discussed gold extensively, so I won't go over every nuance of this chart. A lot of my notes are there. There's a live link to this chart on the site. All posts on the right side of the chart can be referenced uh, by clicking on the symbol. Go to the uh, right side of the home page on the sidebar. There's a select tag. You can either um, choose, you know, the gold symbol, which is dollar sign G-O-L-D, or go all the way down just hit the letter G you'll jump down to the G's and then pull up the GLD so any any gold related posts are usually tagged with both uh, dollar sign GOLD as well as GLD the uh, ETF as that's the uh, most popular vehicle for trading gold so uh, okay so we're looking spot gold here this is the inverse you know my my scenario going into year end um, you know my previous alternate which became my prim primary scenario once we broke this 1180 key support the triple bottoms we went in to uh, form the head of a head and shoulders inverse head and shoulders pattern that I talked about and that pattern did fully form and work work its way up broke above the neckline and the action has been extremely bullish since so as uh, for those of you who follow the site you noticed uh, the other day I, I booked all profits on you know my my trading positions in gold even turned around uh, made a nice short on on gold you know off resistance so what I've done here you can see a couple of things the dotted arrows right here there's a blue arrow and that's from the bottom of the head up to the neckline and so what I did is I cloned you know uh, copied that arrow made an identical copy and added it to the uh, where we broke out you know the technical measurement or pattern projection price projection for a inverse head and shoulders pattern is the distance from the head to the neckline so a very simple way of trying to guesstimate where prices might be heading just take that distance and add it so again i copy and paste the arrows and and that shows us you know somewhere up here almost the 1375 ish area uh, is where we might be heading should this pattern play out to its fullest um, we had this resistance level here that I had marked prices punched above it but what we did is we ran into as you can see I've added this blue downtrend line to the chart we ran into uh, that resistance level this was one of several reasons that along with a couple other reasons that I stated why I booked exposure and at this point uh, you know my original intention was to add on the pullback after I covered that gold short you know via going long dust um, but it kind of some things that I see in the charts told me to just sit tight you know I had a great run on the upside a great you know nice pullback trade on dust um, and I don't want to give back any of the profits uh, because I do see a little bit of conflicting you know technicals uh, and I'm concerned that uh, it may take a little longer to punch up through uh, the recent highs uh, and if and when we do that'll be bullish but uh, as of now we're still We've still yet to take out that resistance that caused me to to, to sell my um, you know gold and gold mining stock positions, and so I see no reason to get at least too aggressively long right now. There's nothing wrong with those longer-term investors, you know, adding exposure on this pullback. Um, do I see it going much lower? There's a possibility, and I'll, again, I'll talk on all that. But uh, one of the things I haven't noted yet on this chart. Uh, if you look at these previous notes, you know, I highlighted all of the overbought readings and this chart goes back all the way to, you know, mid 2012. And every time that gold reached overbought, we had substantial corrections. Just, you know, follow these overbought, these little red boxes up to the top and you can see that those were good times to get out of gold. That was one of several reasons. So gold running into resistance, gold being very overbought, um, all those factors led me to, to pull out now. Here's the thing. My my thesis has been and continues to be that gold is very likely in the early stages of a new cyclical bull market. In other words, the bear market uh, over the last few years 
has most likely ended. We don't have enough technical evidence in place yet to say with a high degree of confidence that is the case. You know, the longer term picture is still, you know, bearish or at least the longer term trend is down. So where I'm going with this is, you know, overbought in a bear market is a great sell signal. And, you know, in at least this chart we're looking at here, all of these previous overbought readings were in a bear market. So it was a great time to book profits on gold. And, you know, we had a quite a few. We had some nice trades in gold, great trades in gold and gold mining stocks, you know, off, off each of these lows uh, leading up to that point. And uh, fortunately, we were able to get out of time and book some profits. Now, if this is a new bull market, what you would expect is overbought to become more overbought. In other words, overbought readings uh, don't work so well. In fact, they're pretty, they work very poorly as a reason to get out or book profits or especially to short gold. So uh, because I can't make a solid case or a you know, definitive case that we are in a new bull market yet, uh, I'm, I'm throwing a little caution to the wind. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make here. You know, another example here is you look at the oversold readings. We had quite a few oversold, but we would get oversold relatively quickly. This is, you know, in a bear market, it's common to stay oversold or to see these repeat, you know, uh, you know, uh, one after another in quick succession oversold readings. And in a bull market, when you get oversold, those are great buy signals, just like the uh, overbought readings are great sell signals. So, well, okay, so that's uh, enough on that. You know, gold hit this downtrend line resistance as well as some other resistance I pointed out, and I'll, I'll talk on in a minute, while overbought, it's that simple. Time to book profits. We had a heck of a run, and uh, I certainly do plan on, at least at this time, I do plan on, you know, adding back some exposure, but I'm just holding off for the time being. Okay, real quick, you know, there's there was another pattern that I had pointed out on gold and GLD. You know, I have different charts to point out different patterns. I had pointed out this ascending broadening wedge pattern, um, which, as I mentioned before, was an inherently bearish pattern when the trend leading up to a ascending broadening wedge pattern is down. Had the trend been uh, upwards leading up to that, that would be inherently bullish and the odds would favor an upside break. With that being said, I pointed out back here that although the odds favored a downside break, you know, what I was reading, my interpretation of, this, of the charts was bullish at the time, and that this would be an objective long entry, because if you go long at the bottom of these patterns, your stop is just on the other side. So even if technically there's a higher probability of a downside break, you go long, and the upside potential, as I pointed out at the time, is very large. So that gives you an excellent RR, or risk to reward ratio. Very little downside if stopped out. Uh, I'd said, you know, that back then, I think I had, my, I had stated you could take a long and stop out below, below the low of the day. We had just slightly pierced below that line. And so that worked out well. However, from there, we went on to hit not only the top of that ascending broadening wedge pattern, but also the minor resistance line here. There was horizontal resistance as well as the downtrend line that I just covered on the gold chart. So, you know, overbought multiple resistance levels at the top of this ascending broadening wedge pattern. And now if you want to talk on the bearish possibilities in gold, that would be to see a downside break. Let's just assume that this ascending broadening wedge pattern ultimately proves to be a bearish continuation pattern. Then what you would expect is a move all the way down to the bottom of the pattern and then probably a downside break. And that would send gold a whole lot lower. That is not, I'll be clear, that is not my primary scenario right now. But looking at this, you know, at gold purely you know, trying to not use bear goggles or bull goggles uh, and just be objective on my analysis, I cannot rule that out. So that's something I'm going to watch. I'll watch the act the price action here. You know, at the very most at this point, going back to the uh, the gold chart, I would expect a back test of the neckline of this inverse head and shoulders pattern. I'm not expecting that right now because prices have moved up so far um, that would be typically when you get a breakout of an inverse head and shoulders pattern, you do get a back test, but it's usually much closer to the breakout point. We're quite a ways up, but with that being said, that's still the next support level. 
should we go much below that line? Even if we go all the way back down to, to test that line, it takes a few weeks to get there. I will be quite concerned with gold. So I just wanted to point that out, that there are some bearish, you know, longer term bearish possibilities with gold. And again, although I favor a, a, a resumption or a, a beginning of a new cyclical bull market in gold, uh, it's just too early. You know, we have several other reaction highs here in gold that need to be taken out and, uh, you know, some longer term moving averages to clear. And, um, you know, we'd need a few more months of higher highs and higher lows. And that'll be also very telling. You know, when gold does pull back, are we going to make a higher low? Um, because if we do take out, you know, especially this level here, that 1175 or so levels, 1170 ish, that puts in a new lower low and that's uh, quite bearish. Before I move away from gold, let's just quickly look at a weekly chart. This is one of several weekly charts that I have. This was, a, you know, the bull market uh, really channel, if you will. And this is where um, gold broke. We had actually a short on the site. Gold was one of the longest standing shorts and we had, a, you know, both uh, downside targets. This was the first and second target. And this really was the, um, you know, the last or most recent cyclical bear market. So, you know, my belief, as I said, I think we're in a secular, which is an overall longer term bull market in gold. And what we have and may currently still be experiences, experiencing is a, a cyclical bear market that began back here in 2011 at these highs up that point. Um, you know, and and just looking at this, say what you will, but it's hard to argue that the overall trend in gold is not still bearish, um, the longer term trend. Near term, obviously in the near term, intermediate term trend is up. And here's a pattern to note. You have these orange trend lines. So this is a sort of a contracting channel or wedge type pattern. This would be a nice breakout. But again, this is the resistance level that I just showed on another chart on that gold, spot gold uh, chart that downtrend line that we hit so we're at resistance and that's why I don't see any reason to 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 gain, go back to a full exposure in gold until we can clearly break out and put that behind us which I expect to happen but it just may take a little work especially with how overbought but uh, just eyeballing this chart you know, these these strong bullish divergences that I've talked about in place are still in place on the weekly chart. You know, PPO, RSI, everything turning up. We're far from being overbought uh, from a weekly perspective in gold. Um, in fact, we, we were very oversold. So uh, this chart alone speaks to me as very bullish. This is almost almost a, a, a bullish falling wedge pattern. Again, I'd refer to it more of a as a contracting channel, uh, regardless of what you want to call it. When we break out over that trend line, a solid and sustained breakout will be uh, a bullish move. You know, gold came down here. There's that triple bottom that we had, and that was at a nice fib cluster that's on here. You can't make it out on this chart, but that's the, uh, a both the 50 and a 61.8 fib retracement uh, the, of these lines drawn here. So again, you had a nice, uh, what was a healthy and expected correction, you know, or bear market in gold hitting that uh, FIB cluster. Uh, we're above that, and uh, we just have to watch it from here. So that, that helps formulate my longer-term uh, view in gold. Moving on to silver, this is a weekly chart of silver. Um, you know, downside target that I had on the site a long time ago. That was hit back here. We even went below that. Silver has this support shelf here. If you look at these, the horizontal lines that I'm highlighting here, uh, really this one that I'm highlighting, let's change colors on that. Let's uh, make that a brighter color. Let's turn it yellow here. So we have this, this very well-defined support shelf back here, multiple tags, and then silver broke below there impulsively which helps validate that trend line. So now here's what we have. Silver at resistance. Again, we're looking at a weekly chart. And overall, because of these divergences, the scope of the correction that we've had in silver, which was even more than what we had in gold, uh, this is, an, again, looks like a uh, large uh, bullish falling wedge, positive bullish, positive divergences in place. Um, however, we have key resistance, this yellow uh, trend line not far overhead. We have this downtrend line that I've drawn here. We'll color that purple just so there's not any confusion. I apologize. This chart's a little bit busy. I didn't clean clean these up for the video. Uh, I've been working on some other things and 
I haven't been trading much in the last few days and just figured I'd get some of these videos out there. So there's a, uh, you know, both downtrend line and just above that downtrend line, even if we punch through that, we still have significant horizontal resistance to contend with in silver. So um, longer term bullish, near term cautious. In fact, if I had to flip a coin and could only go long or short, I'd probably stay short. I think we might see a little downside or even some sideways trading action. Um, but I am not shorting because of my, you know, overall bullish um, bias in, in gold and silver. So I already had my pullback trade and, and dust and, you know, I got 20, 20 something percent on that. And that's, that's good enough for now. So I'm in cash for the most part, looking for an objective area and time to add back exposure. Okay, real quick, this is a daily chart of silver. Pardon all these horizontal resistance lines. Just focus again. This is the same, very similar ascending broadening wedge pattern that I talked about in gold. I had a, you know, silver was recently a trade with a second target, which we hit. And when we hit that second target, which was horizontal resistance, the horizontal line here, we also hit the top of the ascending broadening wedge pattern. So once again, you have these, you know, a formidable uh, resistance level that I do expect over time will be taken out. But so far, the pullback has been relatively muted. Um, you know, to see silver and gold go ahead and punch out and take out these resistance levels, well, that would be very bullish. It would just show that there's a very strong bid. You know, and what impresses me about gold and silver, just to digress for a minute from more of a fundamental view, if you will, is the fact the dollar continues to rip to new highs and defy it. It's extremely overbought. Yet gold and silver, even priced in dollars, continues to rise. What that tells me is there is a lot of money moving into gold as an alternative currency because it's certainly not going up for uh, because of a falling dollar as it usually does. And, um, you know, it almost scares me to think how powerful rally we could get in gold and silver if there's a if and when we finally get at least a, a half decent pullback, you know, uh, you know, a, a decent correction lasting several weeks to maybe a month or more in the dollar, you know, the dollar may go higher from here and it probably will. It sure looks like it, um, but it's not going to go straight up. There'll be pullbacks along the way. So that's what that is one reason that I have no desire to short gold and silver here, even though we're at resistance and overbought, is the fact they've been rising in spite of a rising dollar. And at any point, we can get that pullback in the dollar, and gold and silver can just punch back up. And it, at any point, I may decide to jump back into the uh, you know the shorter term trade. I still have some long term positions in gold, silver, and the minor stocks, and you know long term accounts. But in my trading account, I'm I'm flat. Okay, here's another take on silver. This is a, the spot silver chart. This is a uh, weekly time frame, I believe. Here, yep, we're looking at a weekly chart, spot silver. And uh, here's a trend line going all the way back to 2003, the 2003 lows. Uh, we had a you know tag there, a couple tags there, tag there, and we broke below that trend line. That in itself is a bearish event. However, look what happened. When we broke below the trend line, not only have we regained it, so that gives you a bear trap or a false breakdown, um, and the fact that we've regained that trend line after breaking down. But look at the strong bullish divergences in place. So again, this looks like a uh, almost a bullish falling wedge or contracting channel, even all the way out here on the weekly time frame. And um, that helps formulate, you know, my longer term bullish view. Now we could easily make another thrust down within this pattern and still keep the bullish divergences in place. So, so right now the, you know, the near term picture is a little unclear for me. Uh, longer term picture at this time remains bullish. And this is the daily chart of SLV, the silver ETF. Uh, this is the same chart. I, there's a live link to this chart on the site. And this was the, the target. You know, I'll use the ETFs for trade. So again, we hit the second target, which was a uh, horizontal resistance. Uh, we hit the top of that um, uh, ascending broadening wedge pattern. So uh, hence, again, that was the reason for booking profits on the uh, my precious metal positions and, and reversing the trade to at least catch that initial bounce. Now, if you look here, this minor resistance line, that was former resistance. Uh, and former resistance becomes support. So if you zoomed in a little bit, or if you can look close enough, you'll see that we pulled back to that level. And we've also pulled back to um, some nice support levels in, in quite a few of the mining stocks 
as well. So this, again, this may prove to be a very objective time to add back on. And if you are a longer term trader um, or even a shorter term swing trader, there's nothing wrong with going long here with stops not too far below. Okay, and to round out the last of what I call the big three as far as precious metals, you know, gold, silver, and platinum. Um, this is the weekly chart of platinum. Um, I've shown this chart before, highlighted, you know, some of the these overbought readings, or I'm sorry, oversold. You know, mentioned the last time platinum was this oversold on, uh, you know, was all the way back in 2008, and you can see what happened from there. So actually it got oversold, got a little more oversold and then had one heck of a rally. So oversold um, at support, you know, even if it continues down in this channel, this is where we did the trade here. And remember, platinum was a short-term trade. I put it on as a longer-term trade idea as well. Uh, I need to update the trade on the site. Uh, let's see here. There's a daily chart. Um, we used a ETF, a tracking ETF for that. So this was the daily chart of spot platinum. We were just looking at the weekly chart. You know, I had this double, almost triple bottom low here in platinum prices. We had a bullish falling wedge defined by these blue lines. Nice breakout. Came back to back test. Put that, not back test the wedge, but come back to back test the previous lows. So at the time, I said potential double bottom. I think it's safe in hindsight to say now that was a double bottom. Um, sort of also a W-shaped pattern. A lot of people look for these W reversal patterns looks like the letter w and this initial target that i had initial target meaning yes longer term i think we'll go higher and your next buy signal would be a solid break of that level which is just below 1300 you know 1290 or somewhere in, in platinum spot prices um, nice strong look at those bullish divergences i mean it doesn't get much better than that in trading and so um you know that was a successful trade I need to update the uh, regular swing trade on the site, but as I posted the other day that that target was hit. In fact, this was a trade. I opted to go with PPLT, which is the uh, physical platinum shares. It's an ETF. And um, the first target was 124.19. We hit we hit that. Uh, you can see there the high was 125.95, 124.95. So, you know, as I always mention, you know, going back to that previous daily platinum chart, it looked like we fell just shy of uh, resistance. You know, I always place my price targets on a long. I set my sell orders just below resistance. Uh, you don't try to eke out every last penny because sometimes these securities, a lot of people are watching that level. So sometimes people step in and take their profits early. You know, if it's a thinly traded security, the market makers will do what they can to make sure you don't get there and they take your shares from you. So uh, that's, uh, you know, so we hit that target. Now looking at this, here's a, a nice, I had this horizontal line here. That's at a 12107, it's called 121 ish level. Um, you know, that is nice, uh, support on platinum. And so far we came back and hit that and bounced. So it's still, in my opinion, an objective level for longer term traders or even shorter term swing traders that took profits at T1 to add back there. You know, my next upside target would be 128.10. And again, if we break out of this this W bottom W bottom pattern, um, which would really be a break over the you know this resistance level, which is at about we'll call it 125, um, then you know that pattern will project a lot higher, probably all the way up here somewhere around this area. So again, longer term looks good. Near term got a little overextended. We hit our profit targets, uh, pulled back, and. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with re-entering it here, keeping a stop below, you know, a little bit below that 121 level. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up with uh, just a quick look at GDX. Um, I wanted to keep these relatively short today. GDX, this is a weekly chart, a 10-year weekly chart. Um, you know, I talked on the video I did earlier today, I talked about that uh, short on the SPY that we did on the 60-minute chart a few months back. We shorted a partial rise. And the only other time on the site I'd ever uh, posted one of those trades. You don't see them often, but when you do, that's, um, you know, again, Google, just use the search bar. There's a search function on the site on the right-hand sidebar, I believe, at the bottom. Type in the term partial rise. You'll probably see those trades there. Um, we shorted GTX back here on the partial rise in this broadening wedge pattern and, and had a very nice trade, you know, on the short side and, and, you know, all the way down, I had some 
quite a few nice trades on individual miners as well. And then I pointed out, let's change colors here on this line to not confuse it with the other one. I pointed out a couple months ago when we were at the bottom of this descending broadening wedge pattern that that would be another objective entry. I, I mentioned the bullish divergences in place. You know, we had strong bullish divergences. You know, I've been pounding a, making a case for a while. Uh, we got in early on a few of these trades here. It was a little early, but uh, I've hung in there with, um, you know, my bullish outlook for the miners and, and, and we did really well in this last move up as we did on some of these earlier spikes. Uh, last year and the year before. Now, what I'm getting at here is we've had quite an extended run up from the bottom of that pattern since pointing that out back in when was that uh, late October, early November. And if you look at this horizontal line here, um, we have a reaction low. We have another reaction low right there. And this is where prices really started falling off impulsively. So, you know, we've we've come quite a bit up into the pattern. You know, I'm not looking at, at this as a partial rise trade. You know, that's a possibility. I really do think that miners have, have put in a bottom. I made that case both technically and fundamentally in, in a video a couple months ago, uh, you know, talking about uh, where the price of gold is relative to the miners, where the price of oil is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, again, the theme that I'm trying to impress here is we've come up quite a bit. Um, you know, I ultimately would i think we'll see prices work their way up to at least the top of this pattern and then ultimately go on to break out we'd probably have a reaction so in other words what i'd like to see here is a pullback from from this level a nice pullback uh there's good support on gdx you know looking at this week great support around twenty dollars i would be an aggressive buyer of the miners around that twenty dollar range i'd start scaling in a little bit above it you know, if there's a strong bid underneath a security or an index or a sector, uh, you see the buyers start to come in early. So we may not get all the way down there. But if we do, at that point, I would have probably a, you know, full plus position in the miners and, you know, with a stop somewhat below and looking to position for a move back to the top of the pattern, at which point I would probably book profits again. And again, I'm speaking in general terms. I, this is a you know one chart one time frame. I, all that my trades are based off multiple time frames, so I would have to have the daily charts confirming the 60 minute charts, the price of gold, the price of silver. You know I don't trade the miners in a vacuum. I take all those things into consideration, currencies, everything else. But you know just from a simplistic point of view, that's what I'd like to see. Pull back to that $20 area would be a great entry. We may or may not get it, and that's another thing about trading. You have to if you're longer term bullish on these stocks. Um, and it just punches up through here and keeps going, you have to make a decision. Hey, you didn't get your perfect entry. It would have been nice to get that pullback at 20. Um, and yeah, you might be buying at a higher price, but I would have no problem if and when the charts tell me all those resistance levels that I just mentioned are clearly taken out. I don't see divergences or any reason to not re-engage that sector. I will buy back in, and yes, I'll buy back in at higher prices, um, because I don't want to miss out on a, what I can, what I believe will be a much larger trend. So, again, in trading, you have Plan A, you have Plan B, and Plan C, and you have to be adaptive, and um, you know, change as the charts do, because the uh, charts are, as I always say, the charts are dynamic, not static. They will change over time. So, anyways, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.